Hey guys, today's video is going to be really weird. It's going to jump around a little bit, but at least we have a new video about the electric cafe racer out for you guys. But while we were working on it, I was dealing with Han Tony still. Lord Kurt had his own, you know, life that he was dealing with as well. And there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we were doing that, um, you know, just affected how we worked on this this video. So at least Lord Kurt, you know, he did time lapses and everything he was doing. I couldn't make it out there a whole lot when he was working on the bike and vice versa. It's coming along. Enjoy the video, guys. And did you guys subscribe yet? No? Only 10% of viewers are my subscribers? Well, maybe you, maybe you should subscribe, man. I got the frame cut out for going around that battery box. Basically, we're gonna have every corner, every edge covered by one of these to let it slide into the bike, and then we'll bolt the other side on. So we're gonna weld these up in a square. We'll make it make sure it's square, rectangular shapes, and then uh, we'll just drop it in. got carried away after I drilled those holes and I just finished the whole thing. So what I did was I, I put some braces on the bottom so that it's got support in the middle as it's sitting there. I went ahead and put on some angles there, give it an attachment point as well as to kind of give it a little bit of strength from twisting. I went ahead and welded everything in, I mounted these brackets so this whole portion can just pull off and the battery can slide in. It'll probably just actually put the bike over the top of the battery and then tip it up. It's looking pretty good. I had a little bit of trouble getting it to sit in there square, but it measures the same distance from a uh, center point to each of those corners. So it should sit nice and it should be balanced. And I'm really excited to try to put some of that, uh, put the battery in and then mounting plate for the motor on the back there. There should be plenty of room. I got I might have to cut this old engine mount bolt hole off. Otherwise, it'll be ready to drop in as it is. All right guys, this is the first time I'm finally getting out here to see this thing. I don't even know really where we're at in this video because it's basically just been all Lord Kurt just hammering this thing out behind the scenes. You guys can see here, he's got all the main components already mounted onto the frame. So today we're gonna start trying to, I mean, 
I think we're gonna try to get this thing spinning, this motor, we'll if see. we can. It's I know take, we might be missing a couple take things. It's adaptation, because we've gotta, I mean, this controller doesn't plug straight into a, uh, the motor, so the Kelly controller and this ME1507 are not compatible. By default, you've gotta take this clip off, and then using the extra, they put a, I think we plug in a, a female one, but they gave us the counterpart. We've gotta just convert this to the, counterpart to this one so it'll plug together. Yep. It doesn't by default, so that's one thing that's preventing it from spinning quickly. Um, the only other thing we got to figure out is how to route cables. Okay. We ended up having to, we couldn't fit the 50 amp hour cells in this space, so we ordered some 30 amp hour cells. Not going to be here for a while, but what ultimately is going to happen is there's going to be a platform welded on top of this motor plate, and it's going to weld onto the sides of the battery frame here. We're going to give it more stability, but it's also providing us a mounting point. But this has to come out of the way. So we've got to figure out a way to route cables and then extend them to reach their terminals. This one's going to connect here, this one's going to connect here, and then this short one's going to connect here. But we've got to find a way to jump them. I'm initially thinking just building another two-gauge cable with the ring terminals that we can just nut and bolt together onto this, which then nut and bolts here. It's yep. a temporary thing. If it doesn't work, we can change it out, but at least we haven't snipped the wires at that point. Right, right. Um, it probably won't need to be changed ever because it's copper on copper held tightly with lock washers. So yep. it shouldn't be a problem, but yeah. that's one of the things we got to sort out. It's ambitious to say it'll spin today, but you can right. see everything here. It's just got to be... <laughs> that was our hope, together. but... Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit late. Already. And it is already late. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Man, it's looking can... really good. You want to throw that tank on yeah. there just so that they can see how this thing tank, looks? Yes, he did. super rusty, so we got yeah. to... Yeah, would have had to... Out. Right. It was Look just at that. enough clearance to fit in there nicely without yeah. sorting anything. Look at that, guys. And Man. I'll give yeah. you a perspective of writing it. Yes. People Do it. I'm concerned about the knees here. You can see that. There's the lots clearance, of clearance. They're even going to bypass it. Yep. Give them a full like walk around what it looks like when you're on it. It looks so small right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With no tires or anything on it. So small. Plus, this was designed in the 70s when the average size person was 140 pounds. True that. 220 pounds. Exactly. This is 2020, boys. Yeah. Bikes are bigger <laughs> these days. But yeah, man, that's looking so good. And so we're going to run with just this battery first. We're, yeah. We're, we yeah. are waiting on another set of cells to come in. It shouldn't be current limited. Uh, it'll be able to put 400 at least for a little while. Yep. The more capacity it has, the less it'll heat up. So I wouldn't want to yep. run it like this forever with enough power. Yeah. But we can at least get the bike done. Yeah. As you know, as it will sit, and then just plug in the next battery pack. You know, take some parts off to put it, put the next battery pack in. But so we're besides that, thinking, giving it a, a what we can, paint it, make yep. everything permanent as much as we can. But ultimately, it's going to have to weld there, there, and there onto the existing structure. So it'll need to be sanded down at least in parts and repainted those sections. But it's going to be a month until the noob cells get here. Right. Want to have this thing running before that point. So you can Absolutely. start the clock right now. If this video is four weeks old, yes. you know that we should have it You know it. Day. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just get to work. Okay. Enough talk. Not enough action. Let's get to work. All right, well, we didn't get a whole lot done today. I mean, we've only been out here for like an hour and a half at this point, but it's already getting dark. Um, Kurt just finished grinding the front sprocket. It unfortunately was a little bit too wide for this chain that we're using. So he ground that down and it uh, fits great in there now. And I also got busy doing wiring. So for the motor wiring here, uh, controller wiring, and this is all to power the drivetrain right here. So we're just figuring that out. I didn't bring anything, unfortunately, to pop these pins out, and I can't find anything that is small enough to get into those little tiny holes there. So we're just gonna have to come back, but man, is it looking good.
All right, so we're back out here today and we're de-rusting one more time, just getting the last little bits that we missed last night. And uh, I'm using this stuff. It's the rust dissolver gel formula from Rust-Oleum. This was like the more expensive stuff at Lowe's. I was just there because Walmart didn't have the crud cutter like I normally use. Um, so I went to Lowe's and this was the more like the higher end, more expensive stuff. So I picked one up and it works really well. It works really well. I just put this on here like, I don't know, maybe five minutes ago. You guys can already see all the rust spots are all going away already. And last night we did this spot. I just went over it one more time and uh, it's pretty much looking like bare metal again. And like all the surface rust is gone and all the like the deep clinging rust was, it just kind of turns into a dark gray. So this stuff also says it's supposed to turn the surface into a paintable area, um, but I'm definitely gonna clean it off anyway. I brought some surface cleaner. Once all the rust looks like it's gone, I'll wipe it all off and I did bring over some primer just so I could use this so it wouldn't uh, start rusting again. It's all coming along pretty well. The hardest part with working with motorcycles like this, especially tearing them all down, fabricating stuff and everything, is the rust that just starts forming just around everything. So I figured I'd just get it taken care of so it doesn't start rusting even deeper and really screw something up. Not the most fun job. Next up, we are figuring out the wiring for this, uh, the motor and the battery and the controller. So we actually have all the diagrams that we need and so I just need to snip these wires here, extend them, and then plug them into the correct spot on the controller. All right, well that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys being here. And this project is coming along. I know it doesn't look like we got much done, but we really have. Next up, this frame is gonna get painted real soon. Uh, we will have the drivetrain installed and actually functioning in the next video as well. We're right there. We are right there to making this thing actually run and then being able to slap the whole thing back together. So me and Laura Kurt cannot wait to get this thing actually running and driving. The exciting stuff is finally here and we can't wait to bring you guys along with us. And that being said, guys, make sure you guys are subscribed and your post notifications are on. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.